Hello there! I uh, didn't write a script for this video, but I just want to make this as a help for people that want to get into canoning, get into uh, 1.19 or 1.18, 1.19, 1.20 canoning, um, when they've only actually used 1.8, uh, which has been the standard for very long. To do this, I will be going over uh, the 1.19 uh, canoning guide that Splitblade made. Uh, it says it clearly at the top of the file, like this is not a tutorial, uh, but it does contain a lot of useful information. So, watch the entire thing, there is a lot of changes to go over, and uh, read over, you can just follow along with, uh, with the document, and then you can ask any questions in the comments below or in the discords. I'm going to link a few discords uh, in the description. So one is uh, Splitblade server. Splitblade server. Um, also his YouTube account is going to be linked, but in his server there's a lot of discussion about new canon stuff. A lot of new canoners uh, have, have questions, they ask them there. And you can learn from other, other people's questions or ask them yourself. Another Discord that's linked in the description is Fragment Cannoning. Uh, pretty much uh, the same thing, so a lot of people just asking questions there, talking about um, the game, the cannons. And uh, there was also a test server, or there is a test server for cannoning, it's free. Um, but I don't know how long it's going to be around, but it is, it is a good test server. The guy who made it, uh, Jesus is Hot, um, also has YouTube, I have that linked in the description as well. So he sells his jar. Uh, on Patreon, and you can find that in the Discord as well. And then the last Discord that's going to be linked in the description is for Alpine Client. It's a client that I'm currently on right now. I've been on it for quite a while um, during the closed beta testing. It's just a really good client, not only for factions, although there is some canoning specific um, features in there, such as breadcrumbs, cannon playback, explosion boxes, all that stuff. But that would be a separate video about Alpine. It is currently still in beta, there is a version planned for 1.8 as well, and it is going to be really fucking good, but that's currently uh, not done, so don't go into their uh, Discord asking when it's going to be done. Um, also, schematic isn't added yet to this, but you can add Lightmatica to it if you want to. You can add any fabric mod to this client that you want. And the server that I'm using is Crystal Cannoning. Uh, it's a cannoning server that's been around for a really, really long time. It is the best cannoning server out there. Um, it has a lot of uh, versions, so a lot of 1.8 canoning, but also this 1.19 realm uh, that's probably very soon going to update to 1.20 as well. If you want to test cannons, if you want to learn canoning, I would suggest buying a whitelist, because it is a, a paid whitelist. Um, it's a couple of dollars, nothing that breaks a bank, but it is worth it. It is 100% worth it. In 1.8 things were simple. The explosions happened at the center of the TNT entity, and TNT entities and sand entities got affected from their center as well. In 1.10 they made it so the explosion, the actual position where the explosion happens, so where the rays start, the rays that affect other entities, um, that happens at the top of the bottom pixel in the center of the entity. And because entities like these, TNT, falling block, uh, because they're slightly smaller, uh, we can do a little bit of math to find out exactly where um, those explosions were happening. So you take 1 divided by 16, so 1 divided by 16, that would be the height of the explosion uh, if, it, um, if there wasn't a size difference, but then we just multiply that by 0.98, and that is the actual location where explosions happen. So 0 0.06125, that's one to memorize. Now you might already, already realize that's an issue. If entities get affected from the middle and the explosion happens uh, at the top of the bottom pixel, then TNT is going to shoot itself up, always. So Mojang added a, a little exception for that. They basically made it so all entities get affected from their eye height, which I'm going to go over in a second, except, falling, uh, except primed TNT. TNT would get affected from its actual Y position, which is the, which is the bottom of the entity. So, explosions happen at the top of the bottom pixel, and they affect uh, entities from the bottom. So, this brings an issue, right? The eye height of sand um, was all the way at the top, if I can find B. So, it was uh, at the top there, at uh, 0.85 uh, 
uh, so 15% uh, from the top of the entity. Um, but of course, because it's an entity, we lose 2% again, so 0.833. That's the height that sand gets affected from. And then TNT got affected from the bottom, which means that if you wanted to use like a, a parallel fusion barrel, uh, like we used to in 1.8, your TNT is going to get shot mainly forward and your sand is going to get shot all the way in the air. So I made a push uh, over a year ago now, uh, along with other calendars, to add sand to that little exception of the TNT. So to also make sand affected from the bottom. This basically means that entities, TNT and sand, if they're in the same position, they're going to get affected the same way. And this is not the case in vanilla. If you're playing on a server that does not have this, which we call parity, it's uh, available on Canon servers by doing parity or entity parity, falling block parity, whatever, uh, if you can toggle it. If you play on servers that don't have this, you should just bully the devs into implementing it. So just making making it so that sand also gets affected from its actual Y location instead of its Y location plus its I height. TNT also has an I height at a 0.15 of a block, which also makes no fucking sense because <laughs> that's at 0 0.85, that's at 0 0.15 in vanilla. But this I height gets ignored, basically. There, it doesn't get taken into account for anything and not in vanilla either. Another big change are triangles. On one day, there used to be a thing called the um, east-west patch, which made entities uh, behave the same way if you're firing east or if you're firing north, south, whatever, uh, all directions. Uh, but right now, they kind of implemented it into the actual base game. So, one problem, they flipped it. So, on... on um, on 1.8, you would have a barrel, something like, I'll just grab a fence or a ladder. Let's grab a ladder. You'd have a, a power right here, and then you would have stuff getting shot in here, be slight, like more in front of the power than sideways of it, and it would go up, left, and forward. Right now, this setup would go up, forward, and left, because it always prioritizes the highest velocity. So basically, it's the inverse of um, triangles with the east-west patch on 1.8. You might think, oh, that is fucking awful, and honestly, it, it's not. It, it has a lot of advantages in doing specific stupid cannons. Uh, the fact that the Y level still goes first still applies. The, the reason this works is because of alignment. This is center aligned, this is aligned right there. So you're getting a slightly larger exposure in that direction, which means that it travels slightly farther that way than it does that way, which means that it can, it's gonna go up, forward, and into there which I'm quickly going to do right now. I don't know what this is. I, <laughs> this plot has been going for a while. But yeah. So up and then highest velocity and then lowest velocity. Again, all of this is detailed with uh, very nice illustrations in the canoning guide. It's called 1.19 uh, canoning Apex PvP. Um, that's put together by Split Blade. Basically, about triangles, don't use stair barrels anymore. Use 45 degree barrels, which I'm gonna try to find an example of right now. I don't think I ever finished this cannon, uh, but this is what a, a barrel would look like. You can of course have slabs here, uh, the height just doesn't really matter. Um, or well, it does, but you can decide that for yourself how high you want it to be. Uh, the way I usually do my barrels, which is not 100% 360 um, like proof, but you just have boosters on the uh, left side, which aligns your power to the right, right here. And then all of your entities can get shot at either aligned to this corner or that, or that corner, it doesn't matter. Both are going to have a trajectory uh, that is lo uh, larger on that side than on that side, so it's always going to go up, left, and forward. And of course, if you, like me in this uh, setup, or what would have been in this setup, if you have multiple game ticks between the boosters and the power going off, then you want to add some ladders here or some other type of uh, block that limits uh, stuff that gets shot into the barrel from flying into this corner and blowing up your cannon. And there's a fucking jet flying, or what the f So as I said before, the point where explosions originate has changed, which means that um, there is some differences in how boosters work. For example, on 1.8, uh, if you had TNT right here and right here, it would still affect. Um, it would still have an effect. Like, if this exploded and this was being moved, this would still affect this one. But right now, because 
it was shifted down this much, the rays just kind of pass over the next one. Uh, and this doesn't get affected. And I'll show that really quickly right here. There you go. So this of course still works because the rays are from the bottom. It's also inefficient, but the no Y velocity boosters, they're just not quite no Y anymore. Um, they do give some Y momentum to entities that are here and that are not fully resting on top of the floor. So it might be tricky to get this working, but it will work. So in, in 1.13 they made a, another change um, that changed the way explosion rays travel. So instead of using uh, the bounding boxes that entities or that blocks had to block exposure, for example a banner has a bounding box right there, if an explosion happens on this side it wouldn't affect entities on this side, but they changed that to voxel shapes. What this means is that explosion rays now go through everything that entities can go through which is not fucking great. The same thing applies to webs, for example, which is an issue because most people are used to using webs to protect their cannon box, but you can now also just pearl through these. Just like that, you just pearl through webs. Um, which means that you're gonna have to make some changes to how barrels work, but I'm gonna cover that in a second, I think. Also, some more fun stuff to do with this is that I was talking about those um, no Y velocity boosters previously, stuff like this works. So those TNT rays can actually go through the bottom of this uh, cauldron, even though, as you see, it is very, very inefficient. Another few changes is that since 1.17, explosions above the world, like outside of the world, above uh, build height or below bedrock, um, those explosions will no longer damage blocks that are uh, in the world. Some midairs will not work anymore. Um, and the cannon server or the faction server complex, for example, just has it disabled entirely. That blocks at sky limit just cannot be broken at all. Which, I mean, it's it's fine because you can do a lot of weird stuff with uh, roof cannons and shooting over stuff. And I I don't hate it. I'm not a huge fan of it either, but it's fine. Then redstone. Oh boy, there's a lot that changes here. So I just placed a bunch of dispensers with a bunch of redstone on top. I fired this. Um, that actually worked. And then they get butted. So as you just saw, this one didn't get powered, this one didn't get powered, etc. Um, so this now causes budding, which is awful. I hate this. <laughs> but, I mean, it can be worked around. It's, it's not ideal, but it can definitely be worked around. The nice thing, however, is that node blocks can now be used to update dispensers. So for a booster, I think uh, I see one here. I just use node blocks instead of um, instead of like pistons to update them. So node blocks are gonna be your best fucking friend if you have or if you're building cannons. So instead of being limited to glowstone and slabs, you can also use glass. You can use hoppers even, and hoppers are useful in a lot of ways because you can detect the change in those hoppers. You can even use um, observers to let a, uh, a redstone signal pass over or through because observers are technically transparent blocks. So a redstone like this will travel up and then you can pass redstone current uh, like that. For example, you can have a circuit running through another circuit and I think that's great. Target blocks. Oh my god, I love target blocks. I, I hate target blocks. They look terrible, but they're so useful when you're making a uh, compact redstone. If there is a cramped space somewhere um, you want to take an output from somewhere, but it doesn't really work. Like, if you had stuff going on everywhere, you can just place a target block and it reroutes the redstone into itself and then it fully powers this block. For example, for this 100 obi wall one shot, I use a target block to route a redstone signal. So, this was between 1.18.1 and 1.18.2, where they changed triangles. I'm not going to go into that because um, there was some weird other mechanics first. Um, but this basically allows me to differentiate between adding or removing a game tick. And target blocks are movable, they're so useful to reroute redstone signals. And you might run into a situation uh, where you suddenly remember, oh my god, I can use a target block for this, and that's good. Next up, scaffolding. So, scaffolding is a very useful block for builders, I guess, builders in survival. Uh, but it has this um, 
this feature where you can have an overhang, but it cannot be very big. So if you if you cross this limit, then um, scaffolding breaks. But that means that every single piece of scaffolding stores like how many blocks it's uh, it's overhanging. So this, for example, if I uh, manage to stack this one up, uh, this will be overhanging by one, which means that the last block, as you saw, just broke. And then we can't place a new one. And then if we add a block again, the support changes, and then we can place a new one again. So you can actually just up, um, detect this signal from the scaffolding. You can, of course, automate this with uh, trapdoors or pushing a piston block underneath and pushing it away. Every piece of scaffolding adds one game tick. So basically right here, I'm getting one, two, three, whatever, like what is that, 20 or something? Uh, a lot of scaffolding um, and it all just adds one game tick. So in this, in this cannon, I have my powers one game tick apart. So all I have to do is just detect the scaffolding here and then detect it one block higher. And then there's one game tick between these two. And for a barrel, which you would do in this case, is you would shoot up through scaffolding and then go sideways and forward, etc. So on a cannon that would look something like this, so entities would travel up, right? But the nice thing about scaffolding is that you cannot like travel down through it. Of course, you'd want to block this off around it, etc. And maybe add a few layers of this in case people can glitch creeper eggs into them. Uh, that's just something to test for yourself. But it is it is pretty tricky to actually get through this. So then, of course, you would extend these walls up. Um, your cannon box and then you would have an entire open side right here maybe add some pistons or something that you can adjust uh, the Y level from inside the cannon box but that's all up to you powdered snow hey I got back onto this uh, this cannon from before powdered snow is really useful um, if you move through it it slows you down a bit and it can basically be used um, as uh, as a cobweb in 1.8 but as a cobweb for a web midair so it has the same functionality that if an entity is inside of it and it gets shot out, it will only travel for one game tick and it will then just freeze in midair and uh, the next game tick it just starts falling. They are a lot more efficient than webs when you use them for this. Another fun thing about these uh, powdered snow thingies um, is that you can shoot entities through them. Well, you can shoot TNT through them. So if I fire this thing again, All the TNT will travel through, but all of the sand will collide with the powdered snow, which is not great. You can probably think of multiple defenses that would use this, but do keep in mind, people can walk through this, people can place creeper eggs inside of this, um, water breaks it, uh, so it's not, it's not super overpowered, but you can use it. It's also pretty hard to get on most servers. And it also makes it harder to make those uh, web midairs with powdered snow um, because shooting sand into um, powdered snow isn't as easy. One fun thing, however, is that you can dispense powdered snow and then pick it up again with an empty bucket. Now how useful this is, I don't know because <laughs> You know, you're, you're TNT filling cannons and usually a place where you want to dispense powdered snow, you don't want to be dispensing TNT. Um, but might be useful, it's a feature, it's nice. There's some other ways of wiring, uh, for example, leaves. Um, bubble columns are a big one, they're described in the uh, the doc as well, the document. Um, but yeah, I'm not a huge fan of bubble columns. I think most servers are going to do uh, disable or disallow them in defenses um, which means it's not super useful to build cannons that rely on them uh, though making new concepts is always fun and those bubble columns updating they all update uh, at once then concrete powder it's fun it seems more useful than it actually is in raiding um, but yeah it's, it's just fun i'm gonna fire this cannon it was made for parity disabled so before um, the difference in where entities get affected from. So this still relies on entities getting affected from the bottom, uh, on sand uh, and falling block entities getting affected from the top. So how I accomplish that in this case is just 
I um, I have a trapdoor, <laughs> and it it opens, and then you shoot the concrete powder against this while you shoot the TNT against a, a top trapdoor. You get a 13 pixel difference. Yeah, I fucked it up first time. But if we take this uh, 0.833 between the hitbox of the TNT, which is at the bottom, and the hitbox of the falling block, which is at the top, and we just divide that, uh, multiply that by 16, 16 pixels, we get 13.3 pixels. So with this difference of 13 pixels, you're getting pretty close to having the same exposure on sand and TNT without parity. Just keep in mind that most servers are going to have parity enabled, so your life is going to be so much easier. Yeah, I'm just going to flick this lever, see what happens. It might break, I don't know, it might crash the server. But no. Yeah, concrete is fun because you can do stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> but it's a, uh, a double point four, so it's a point two effectively. Um, but again, concrete turns solid when it touches water. It's also described in the doc on page 14. Um, but it doesn't turn solid when it touches lava. So if you make a base, put a fucking lava wall on it, and you're gonna be good from concrete. Now, a pretty big one. Um, because a lot changed with redstone. I think that was in 1.9. Yeah, 1.9. Um, I have a, a list uh, on my phone of <laughs> changes made to the game that uh, SK compiled. That's... Uh, not Samsweek, which is the dev of the server. So on 1.8, this would just be a double piston extender. Well, it still is, um, but it doesn't retract. Uh, and that is not great. You can, however, still make double piston extenders, but it, it's going to be clunky. It's not going to be very uh, convenient. So I'm just going to set it up real quick. So this is a design I made a year ago, I think. Um, it just, yeah, this is just an updater piston, but it powers all of these. It powers this block, so all of the pistons that get pushed into this location get butted. All right. And then when you retract, this system goes off. That system goes off. This observer detects that and it sends uh, another pulse to the back, which pulses these back pistons again, causing them to retract the pistons in front. Um, and because a comparator cannot detect like one tick when redstone tick signals, it doesn't actually go into a clock. So as you can see, the back piston fires twice, which makes it slightly slower, and I don't like it. There's other ways of doing this, to be clear. Just make sure that this uh, back row pulses twice. Uh, just There's no real need for uh, double piston extenders on sandcoms. This is what most sand comps look like right now. It's just two rows of uh, normal pistons. Another notable change is that you can no longer push entities just out of webs, the way most people used to do their um, their overstack or their uh, restack sand for OSRB. Uh, so you're gonna have to find a different solution for that. One of the fixes I did was making this uh, small sand comp right here, and just um, extending it off of the like shifters from my normal sand comp. For a quick print, this is usable. I'll throw a picture on the screen of something that Snowman is using. Uh, not Mythical Snowman, but uh, Snowman, Frosty, um, uh, also a cannoner. And his design basically just uses the three redstone tick clock that you get with a piston pushing uh, and retracting. The same clock that you get here, but with a slime block attached, and then some, um, some smaller blocks where entities can stay uh, in their entity form instead of breaking. You've probably no noticed it already. Um, Jesus Christ, this is a fucking mess. I'm gonna go to a different cannon. This one is also a mess, but it's a good example, I guess. Okay, I went over a few cannons and then realized that they're all dog shit wiring. Um, this one is all right. Don't mind this part. That was just added on in a few minutes because they wanted to raid and they didn't ha I didn't have a cannon. But you have two options when doing observer wiring. You can push it from the bottom or you can push it from the top. This basically works similar to how uh, RSB works, redstone bypass. What happens is you push these pistons, keep in mind they're supposed to be quick pulsed, very short pulse, and that pushes all of these observers up. They detect that they're being moved, so they send out a signal, and that signal is then routed into this piston right here, which pushes, pushes them all down again. Um, and 
they fire too quick so that the dispensers do not actually get powered again because dispensers have a small cooldown. And in this case, for my hammer, I just take the output from this power right here, um, from this piston, I, I don't know why, I don't know, whatever. And then I power them from the top, so that's also an option. You can fit slightly more dispensers in the same area if you do it like this. Oh, also, you can now place redstone on pistons, that's nice. I forgot, <laughs> I forgot that was a new thing, I just realized. So also, you need a quick pulse. You pulse them all down, and then you just need some uh, some redstone dust that gets powered, or some other way of powering this piston right here that pushes all of it back up. So to see it working, you got them going up and down, and down and up, and then they all get shot out. And there's no sound, but it doesn't really matter. That's just how they work. I'm just gonna fire it one more time. Something very important to note here is that this is a zero tick. So, at the same time that the redstone signal goes out, like that it powers this dispenser, that powers this piece of redstone, it instantly instantly powers this piston. So it's actually a zero tick. It's not a, a one redstone tick signal, it's, it's too short. So if you use a node counter, for example, which I can't do right here, node counter and I select this and this, which is, I don't know, my, one of my powers on my hammer. It um, it detects one of them, because I selected the right dispenser right here. <laughs> uh, if you wire them from the bottom, you can select this one. But it didn't detect the second one. The easiest way of handling this, or um, the easiest way of working around this, is by getting what I call some probes. So you just uh, put some probes on there. Make sure to I'll put one here as well. Uh, make sure to mark them so you don't forget to uh, to remove them later. You don't have like a random observer somewhere. Uh, so select the observer, select the observer, select the observer, fire, and then um, you can always guarantee to see when they get powered. It's not convenient. It's annoying, but it's just how the node counter was made, and it doesn't work with. Uh, those zero tick signals. So for boosters you can do something like this where you also quick pulse the bottom piston or the top one um, and then you just push up a bunch of observers. Uh, just some some bigger example uh, of how all of this works and you can still power like the signal goes out when it gets pushed up so this one would be in this location powered as dispenser which powers this redstone which then powers everything there, and again using the node blocks to update everything. So uh, otherwise, this dispenser right here wouldn't get powered. Um, but yeah, it's it's convenient. I, I think observer wiring is one of the nicest things that we have uh, in these newer versions. And oh, this is a mess as well. This works, by the way. Um, <laughs> So I just extended the signal from there, travels up like this. Um, it works, but it's it's not pretty, so don't use it. You can also use it horizontally. Um, there is ways of making this clean. I didn't bother with this cannon. Uh, <laughs> this is one of the first things I made on here as well, um, just to test like the horizontal wiring. But I do think for stuff like slab bus, for example, or in this case, um, what is this, like a stopper or something. Um, the, it is useful to be able to power stuff from the side like this. And this this does make up for not being able to just wire dispensers by having a line of redstone on top. I, th I think this makes up for it. Then, conveyor comes. I'm gonna show this example right here. It's not a very good example. But what would happen in this case is sand will be falling right here um, and these blocks move back and forth and it shifts everything into the middle. So back to this cannon, here you see a slightly larger uh, conveyor comp using rails instead of uh, an extra block and then open fence gates. Um, but all the sand falls into here and then it all gets shifted into the middle. Um, and in the center right here it gets float aligned is uh, what what the cool kids call it uh, the technical the technical uh, minecraft players so you push the entity and then it gets basically center aligned but it's a few digits off 
But what I wanted to say by that is that you don't need to worry about having like guardrails here and here. Um, it won't get enough sideways momentum if your boosters are center aligned as well. Again, just want to remind you that there's a lot of information, pictures and everything uh, in the document that Splitbait made. For a quick showcase of which blocks you can use, these are the useful blocks uh, for using conveyors. So you can have a pretty big conveyor sand comp, pretty wide conveyor sand comp using all of these blocks. Uh, and if you want more inspiration, these are uh, most of the useful blocks that you can use for heights um, when aligning stuff to the bottom or aligning stuff to the top. I made a video recently about this sand plate, which I'm quickly going to show again. It's already outdated, by the way. I'm going to disable hitboxes. But this used um, a special concept that pushes the entities down to get a one game tick sand plate where everything turns into an entity at the same time. Um, this uh, made sand plates that had uh, a lot of pistons all pushing in from the side. 128 for a 255 or 192 for a 384 stacker. They made those really big sand plates um, like useless. And I'm yet to make a video about these types of sand plates, um, but they do the exact same thing, just slightly cleaner, I guess. Basically, this version had a bunch of reliability issue issues, because if your sand bots were too slow, the sand wouldn't stack all the way up to these pistons, and when they tried to push, nothing would happen. And they would just start falling and everything would get clogged up and it would break and it was awful. Um, so right now, doing the exact same thing, but sideways. So the sand would stack right here, and I'm pushing blocks right next to them instead of uh, pushing the blocks themselves. And this is probably something fast, I don't know. But it looks like this. It looks it looks really funny with the, the pistons being pulled back up. I just really like how that looks. I made a good prototype somewhere, but I, I'm just gonna fire this one and hope that it works. It just, it's, it's much more similar to how those sand plates used to work. Yeah, this was a whole thing. I'm, I'm just not gonna bother. So it opens up. Everything gets shifted down. Pushed down all at once. So it's also using the slime retraction. I'm gonna stop this. Um, so it's also using the slime retraction and it's also us using the updates from bottom to top. Uh, but just in a slightly more convenient way. So it opens up. Pushes down. Everything falls. And then in the middle right here, everything gets pushed back up. And I, I like this design. It can go slightly faster than the normal template, the template before as well. All I want to say is be creative, have fun, just make some cannons. It is worth it to get into these newer versions. It's just, it's, it's really refreshing. Even though some of the features are not the way that we'd want them to be, it's just, it's refreshing. I got a call there, I don't remember what I was talking about before, and as I said, I didn't write a script for this video, so I'm just not gonna bother. Check out the description, check out the, that um, document that Splitbay put together, check out those Discord servers if you want to learn from other people so you don't make the same mistakes. Do ask questions, both in that Discord server, or those Discord servers, and in the comments right now, I usually try to answer questions. And uh, just, yeah, get on the game, get on, on 1.19, 1.20, 1.18, whatever. Experiment, have fun, um, and yeah, <laughs> just, just going through these cannons I made. Uh, this cracks me up. So if you get on Crystal and you see me online, you can always message me if you have like a problem that you can't solve with cannoning. I might be able to help. Or if you just want to do a bow trace, I'm always down for that. Um, <laughs> This is how I spend most of my time on the server. I'm actually not cannoning that much anymore, but I just think it's nice that with Alpine client releasing, that more people are getting into the, the newer versions. Uh, and there's also a bunch of servers on the horizon. So it's it's looking pretty good. And just enjoy. Enjoy uh, making cannons. All right. Thanks for watching. Peace. Also, I completely forgot, but you should like and subscribe. I just... It's mandatory now. All right, bye.